If you want to elevate your watercolor style, I highly recommend exploring super granulating pigments. And the nice thing is that you don't need a lot to complement the existing colors you already have. In this tutorial, I'm only going to use a single granulating color called Forest Blue from Schmincke, along with my regular watercolors to create some amazing texture. Very tactile, a very different take on a traditional fall composition featuring a pumpkin. Thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video, more on that later. And just so you know what to expect, this entire painting will be done in two layers, first using a light layer with some granulation and then a darker layer on top to add some dimension. As always, I will post an outline and a full recording on my Patreon channel for those of you who want to paint along with me in real time, but let's start from the beginning. I'm going to sketch a pumpkin shape, more like an oval one to match the layout of my paper. And while I'm doing that, I will quickly remind you that all watercolors typically come in two varieties. The non-granulating kind we're all familiar with, very smooth, some of them very vibrant, like the swatches you see on the screen. These are the ones you get in most beginner sets. And the granulating kind, less smooth, so you can actually see the particles of paint on paper and it gives it a very nice, very beautiful texture that you can incorporate into your work to give it a more tactile, visually interesting quality. Some brands make what's called super granulating paints, meaning this texture effect is very pronounced. And some of my favorite ones come from Schmincke, which is the one I will be using here. Now let me show you how to actually apply it and my general philosophy with granulating paint is that it really shines when we use it next to regular non-granulating transparent pigments. So I'm going to start by applying very diluted thylo blue, it's non-granulating, all over the first segment of the pumpkin and then drop a little bit of super granulating forest blue. It's going to spread and the particles of paint will start moving and separating. In those areas where they're mostly concentrated there will be a lot of texture and in those areas where I put my regular blue it's going to look mostly smooth. What's really helpful at this stage is to lift your paper and tilt it in different directions. This way you're actually applying gravity and helping your paint particles to move more. Doing this will really help you enhance the granulating effect and create some very interesting unpredictable blends. I'm going to continue moving around the shape, starting with my regular non-granulating pigments and then adding forest blue, mostly in the shadow areas at the bottom and also between the segments. So essentially I'm only adding granulation in the darkest areas of the pumpkin while preserving the transparency and translucency around the highlights. And this way I think it works best because if I were to apply only my granulating pigment throughout, it would end up looking too heavy and too textured and I would lose my highlights and a sense of three-dimensional shape. Now I've introduced a bunch of other non-granulating colors including yellow, purple, maybe even some red just for fun. Obviously you don't need this variety if it's not your style. I'm just playing around and I'm going to have a bunch of other fall related things like leaves and acorns, orange Chinese lanterns at the bottom. So I want to have a hint of those colors in my pumpkin but this is more more of a stylistic choice. You can simply rely on light non-granulating blue as your base for your more granulating color. The main thing I wanted to show you at this stage is that just with a little bit of granulation you can really modify the look of your regular pigments and create a fresh interpretation of your favorite subject. It doesn't have to be a pumpkin, I recommend trying this with birds and animals and especially in your botanical art on different types of greenery. As you can see just one layer of paint and we already have a lovely illustration with lots of texture and dimension but of course I'm going to take it to the next level with one more layer of color. I just need to let everything dry out. And while I'm waiting, allow me to briefly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website platform for managing your brand. I recently used it to build and to launch my brand new website and I couldn't be happier with the process and the final result. It's really amazing how easy it was to customize my site using their guided design system. They call it the Squarespace Blueprint and I was able to launch a completely personalized illustration portfolio and a catalog of my watercolor classes without having to learn any complicated technology 
technology. If you're a creator like me and you need to grow your online presence, I highly recommend exploring Squarespace. You can choose from a variety of professional layouts and styling options, add products and services for sale, and even offer online courses and memberships directly on your website. So make sure to check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to this link and save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now back to our blue pumpkin. At this stage, the first layer is completely dry. And now you can see how the granulating strokes have landed, adding lots of visual interest to the surface. I really appreciate the contrast between the regular transparent watercolors at the bottom, on the leaves and the lanterns, and all the heavy texture we have on the pumpkin at this stage. Now I'm going to use Perlin Green to add some grooves on the stem and then maybe go over the entire pumpkin one more time, this time using very diluted transparent pigments just to accentuate what I already have, focusing mainly on the shadow areas and the overall silhouette. Here I'm using an old round brush in size 4. The tip is completely worn out at this stage, but I keep these Winsor & Newton Sable brushes for years and try to still use them for any kind of rough work that doesn't require precision. To be honest, they're just too expensive to throw away, so I try to prolong their lifespan as much as I can. And here, as you can see, it's working out just fine. I'm applying these interrupted strokes, so essentially, instead of glazing, a full solid layer of color on top I'm leaving gaps painting around sort of like elongated circles and connecting them trying to mimic the texture that I see in my reference photo but I'm not concerned at all with scientific accuracy I'm really just simplifying the pattern that I see and just trying to focus on capturing the overall look of this texture not the details at the same time, I'm adding a bit more value, meaning the parts I'm working on are slowly becoming dark. So I want to make sure I only concentrate on the shadow areas, like at the bottom and maybe between the segments of the pumpkin and closer to the stem. The colors I'm using are all sort of in the range of blue and green. I started with more vibrant thyla blue green shade and then I'm gradually switching to aqua green. I will leave a link to all my materials in the video description below so you can check that out if any of the pigments I use catch your eye. You can even try something called Perlin Green, which is technically a black pigment. It just sort of looks or reads as a really dark green on paper. Just make sure that all your colors at this stage are very diluted. It's just a hint of color, but mostly water that I'm using. And I have to mention that whenever you're doing a second layer like this, granulating pigments are not the best choice. Based on my experience, they really don't layer well, so you can probably guess why. It's because the textural quality would really interfere with your underlying layer. And my advice when using granulating pigments is to always apply them in your first, your background layer. Let them do their magic, creating these beautiful textures. And then if you want to accentuate things further if you want to build more value you can always go on top with a different color but it's better if your top layer is non-granulating otherwise just again speaking from experience it might end up looking a little messy and you might lose your beautiful color transitions underneath now i'm going to use burnt sienna to add some shadows and definition on the stem so it doesn't get lost against the white background and the white of my paper. And then I'm going to apply the same burnt sienna on the edges of the leaf, blending with clean damp brush. Again, the idea here is just to add some crispness and accentuate the silhouette with darker color. I'm going to use sap green and maybe the same burnt sienna on the acorn, just building a bit of shadow and definition, blending again with a clean damp brush so my darker colors can disappear seamlessly into the highlights. And with this, I will have a bit more realistic dimension. Of course, how can I forget a glaze of quinacridone gold all over the leaf? That's something I always do in my fall compositions. 
adds a wonderful glow. It's a pigment that I highly, highly recommend if you're into fall scenes, landscapes, or still life like this. Last year, we used it on the mushrooms and the chipmunk, and it's just what you need to create some beautiful autumn atmosphere. Finally, let's add some texture on the Chinese lanterns. Here I'm going to use a combination of pyro orange and quinacridone burnt orange just to paint the shadows and distinguish between the segment of each lantern. Both pigments are transparent and again I'm mostly just focusing on the bottom part to follow the same logic of light and shadow that we used on the pumpkin and the acorn. Now let's add a very light shadow underneath it all just to ground everything and appreciate the texture one more time. It's actually amazing how tactile everything looks only with two layers of color. So when I use non-granulating pigments, it takes me three, four, maybe even five layers to get the same kind of texture and weight, if you will. And my favorite part is this contrast between granulating and non-granulating parts. So I hope this gives you lots of ideas for how to introduce subtle granulation into your work. Share this video with someone who loves watercolors and if you're interested in the Chinese lanterns, I have an entire step-by-step -step tutorial just focusing on this beautiful plant and the watercolor techniques you need to paint it. I will link it below. Thank you for watching and painting with me. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you soon.